Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's August 28th, 2018, and uh, HARP just had their open house. Many of you know that I planned on attending and I was unable to, but I just read this article, um, you know, about the open house, and it's got me kind of, you know, aggravated and I want to set the record straight and correct some of uh, the director's uh, statements about um, mind control. So let's get right to it. Um, the, the article is titled, Harp Opens Its Doors to the Public, But Some Minds Prove Hard to Change. Um, let's start off just by playing the video where they openly admit that, hey, it's a laboratory in the sky. Nothing to see here. This facility was built by the Air Force about 20 years ago uh, to study the ionosphere, to, to do active experiments in the ionosphere. The ionosphere is a layer uh, that surrounds the, surrounds the Earth at about 100 kilometers up to maybe uh, 2,000 kilometers. It's important for a lot of things like satellite communication. Any, any kind of radio signals that pass through the ionosphere are affected by the ionosphere. Each of these trailers you see around me have uh, transmitters in them. The transmitters feed power from the main building over there up into these into these dipole antennas. And basically there are 180, uh, 180 antennas uh, radiating uh, high frequency waves up in the ionosphere. It's a, it's, it's a big ham radio, a big HF radio, the, the biggest in the world. Fundamentally what this is about is, is taking the ionosphere at, at 100 kilometers up, up and turning it into a laboratory. We can do experiments. We, we can create bubbles. We can heat small sections. We can create waves. We can, we can excite uh, plasma resonances and do a lot of experiments. We can, we can transmit signals all around the world. We can, we can study the effects of the ionosphere. It, it basically makes the ionosphere a laboratory. And, do, and we can do experiments that no one else can do. It's a, it's a laboratory without walls. So it's a laboratory without walls. The whole world, you know, the whole sky is a laboratory. You got to love that. So, of course, you know, the, the article goes on to state, you know, some pretty silly things. And I just want to mainly address one. Um, it says, you know, uh, of course, conspiracy theories are still out there. Former governor of Minnesota, Jesse Ventura, claims HARP is a mind control device. Ooh. That's what we're going to talk about. Others say it can control the weather. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez says it was used to create a devastating 2010 Haiti earthquake. Um, but let's just address Bob McCoy, director of the Geophysical Institute of the University of Alaska, who I'm going to be emailing after this video, um, about what he says. No, it's not a weapon. It couldn't be, he said, standing under the towering tennis. The way the high frequency radios work is the atmosphere is transparent to those signals. Um, if we made this 10 times bigger and tried, we still couldn't affect the weather. Mines, this is a part that's important. Electrical signals in the mind are very low frequency. Harp is a very large frequency. The waves are meters long, so there's no way they can control mines. Now, I'm going to focus solely on this for um, this video because what he is saying is utter BS. Um, okay, so yes, your brain does work on extremely low frequencies or ELF waves. And he says harp is a very large frequency, meaning high frequency. And so there's no way that it could possibly can control minds. Um, you know, and I'll talk about the weather thing another time, but Bernard Eastland and John Hersher, uh, previous director of HARP, both said that it, at 100 gigawatts, they could control the weather. And of course, um, HARP's effective radiated power is only 5 gigawatts. So there may be some truth to that, but you know, saying that there's no possibility they could ever control the weather with this is also complete BS. Um, but he, him saying that harp is high frequency, so it couldn't possibly have anything to do 
with uh, mind control is utter BS. And I'll prove that in just three links. So if you go to climateviewer.com slash harp, um, you'll see my page, Harp and the Sky Heaters. And what you're going to notice on there, very first thing up, is I do have a map that I created several years ago of the Harp facility. You can see everything that's there. Um, and this is the IRI, the Ionospheric Research Instrument. It is the high frequency um, antennas that you saw in the video just now. But if you scroll down to my Ionospheric Heater FAC, you'll see a section called Essential Reading and a bunch of articles. The two I want to focus on are how HARP really works and mass mind control. Now, in ionospheric heaters, how HARP really works, you'll see that I, you know, I go into detail that yes, it is a 2.8 to 10 megahertz high frequency transmitter, and that induces controlled temporary modification to electron temperature at a desired altitude, which is used in conjunction with diagnostic equipment to study in a cause and effect fashion, electromagnetic propagation, plasma turbulence and instabilities, blah, blah, blah. So there are many facilities like this around the world. Um, I show a couple of them like High Pass, uh, the Arecibo, um, ionospheric heater, the Arecibo Enhanced High Frequency Ionospheric Heater that's in Puerto Rico, um, the Sura one in Russia, the Tromso Array in Norway, and uh, of course HARP itself. And uh, like I said, HARP has 3.6 million watts going into it, 5.0 um, 5 gigawatts effective radiated power, but it is used to create ELF waves. So he is either d straight up lying or just bending the facts or obfuscating whatever you want to call it. Now he says 100 kilometers. Um, as you can see in this diagram right here, I'll shrink it just a hair. Um, we're talking 3,200 to 3,500 kilometers out here in the E layer. Um, and you can see three hertz ultra low frequency waves being generated. The electrojet region is at 100 kilometers. That's where he's talking about heating. So this is called polar electrojet heating. It's all part of what's known as the ionospheric Alvin resonator or IAR. Um, and what happens is it cr creates magnetohydrodynamic waves. They're standing waves and uh, they create very low frequency emissions. As you can see, this is the Schumann resonance of the planet. And this is HARP removing the Schumann resonance and it says spectrum after harp ULF start noise increased by more than 10 to 20 decibels between 0.7 to 10 Hertz so I don't understand why he is obfuscating lying whatever you want to call it um, but they certainly can create very very low frequency waves using high frequency waves um, and this is just a fact. Polar electrojet heating is how they do it. Um, I have an example of, you know, the different layers of the ionosphere. This is the auroral electrojet. Polar electrojet heating is heating the electrojet. And what does it do? Uh, they shoot their 2.8 to 10 megahertz signals up into the electrojet. And as you can see right here, ELF and VLF um, less than 20,000 uh, hertz created radiated ELF, extremely low frequency signal related to the power of the high frequency transmitter. So yes, it creates ELF waves. The other um, version of doing this is called ionospheric current driver ICD heating. And this can be done anywhere in the world. And what you'll see with this is they heat the F region at 300 kilometers, which creates magnetosonic waves, which then heat the lower region, the E region, the 100 kilometer region, which creates Alvin waves, which shoot around the world. And it says allows frequencies higher than 60 to 70 hertz. But they actually create them much lower than that. 
0.1 hertz magnetosonic. 0.1 hertz. 2.5 hertz shear Alvin wave created by Harp using high frequency. So straight up bold face lie. Oh my God, I wish I would have been at that open house. I would have made him eat his lunch. Um, but that's exactly what he says here. ARP is very large frequency. The, the waves are meters long, so there's no way we could control minds. Now, I'm not saying that sending ELF waves can control people's minds, like make you go out and kill somebody or put voices in your head, but it can certainly affect your mood, affect your brain, affect your central nervous system. That's what it does. These are the facts. The facts are they use high frequency to heat a portion of the ionosphere to create ELF and ULF waves. So they turn high frequency into very low frequency. I have another article, Harp ELF Generation and Mass Mind Control. And in this one, I'm going to read you just two things mainly. Extremely low frequency waves. Elf waves up to 100 hertz are once more naturally occurring, but can also be produced artificially, such as the Navy's Project Sanguine for submarine communication. ELF waves are not normally noticeable by the unaided sentences, yet their resonant effects upon the human body have been connected with both physiological disorders and emotional distortion. Okay, so ELF can screw with your brain. And I have a chart here, ULF 3 to 30 hertz, ELF 300 to 300 hertz, 30 to 300 hertz, um, and VLF is anywhere from 3,000 hertz to 30,000 hertz. So they're using uh, 2.8 to 10 megahertz, and they're turning that into frequencies lower than 300 hertz by heating the ionosphere. Don't believe me? Well, the Russian government, Russian parliament, concerned about U.S. plans to develop new weapon. And what did they say about the high-frequency active auroral research program? The HARP program, and not controlled by the global community, will create weapons capable of breaking radio communication lines and equipment installed on spaceships and rockets, provoke provoke serious accidents in electricity networks and in oil and gas pipelines and wait for it and have a negative impact on the mental health of people populating entire regions. And the reason why is because they use this thing to create ELF waves. So they turn high frequency into low frequency by creating a resonator in the sky, a virtual antenna, as it were. Um, and that's exactly what they say in, in the, the papers right here. These are by Dennis Papadopoulos from the University of Maryland. You can see the references for this at the bottom here. Dennis Papadopoulos, University of Maryland, active experiments in space using HARP. Um, this is under the MURI project. Um, and all of the links are right here, virtual antenna right here. So probably still on the internet. It is still on the internet. Virtual ultra low frequency antennas, 2013. Current high frequency experiments and capabilities related to workshop task statement, virtual ULF, ELF, VLF, ionospheric antenna using HARP. So turning high frequencies into low frequencies. Uh, Director Bob, you, Bob McCoy, you just boldface lied. Um, and I don't understand how you think you could get away with this, especially with the kind of documentation I have. I'm certainly going to put this video up on YouTube and I hope people spread it around. I will email you with these links directly. I'm sure you already know this, but whatever. Um, you know, and Secretary of Defense William Cohen, I created this uh, meme several years ago, said others are engaged in an eco type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. And he is specifically talking about ELF waves. 
because extremely low frequency waves have been known to set off earthquakes. Um, so there are many VLF and ELF transmitters around the world. I have a whole bunch of them documented here. You can see all of these on Climate Viewer 3D at climateviewer.org. Um, and they are, they're all over the globe, but HARP being the most powerful one. Uh, Project Sanguine, which was mentioned earlier, 76 hertz transmitter, one in Clam Lake, Wisconsin, the other in Republic, Michigan. Um, activists jumped the, the fences and actually cut these lines. That's the antenna. They're basically power lines that run for hundreds of miles. Um, well, you can see right here, this is 11.8 miles, so 11, probably about 50 miles long there. Um, one's shaped like an X, one's shaped like an F. And uh, it was associated with something called the Taos hum. You can watch the video on this. People would hear a humming in their ear. Well, now they, you know, create ultra low frequencies using HARP, um, you know, with 2.8 to 10 megahertz and they can produce 0 0.001 hertz up to 20,000 hertz using the boiling of the atmosphere that they were talking about. Um, you know, a couple patent images here. This is from Bernhardt about, you know, how it all works, you know, all the instruments that are involved. And, uh, you know, this is what they do. They create 2.5 hertz shear alvin waves um, which are basically um, you know spiraling waves you can see right here ULF amplitude from um, as measured by the Demeter satellites from the HARP um, experiments by University of Maryland and right there 2.5 Hertz off the chart so you busted, you lied, there it is again, 2.5 hertz spike. That is the 2.5 hertz that we used to see on the induction magnetometer before the US Air Force took it away from um, HARP, before they sold it to the University of Alaska. I don't know why Bob McCoy is playing dumb about all this, but there's no hiding all this anymore. It's all very well documented, you can watch it all. I also have a video on this. You can check it out on you, my YouTube channel um, right here in the Harp in the Sky Heater section explaining ionospheric heaters, how Harp really works. It has 135,000 views. It was made three years ago. Um, and all you have to do is search for Jim Lee Climate Viewer on uh, Facebook or on YouTube and you'll find that. But I'll put all the links to the details to these two articles up here, all three of these articles in fact. Um, and everything is available on climateviewer.com slash harp, including the map of the harp facility and uh, an additional map of all of the ionospheric heaters worldwide. So you busted dude i don't get it um i don't understand why you would try to obfuscate like that but the facts are the facts and you know when you got guys like um dennis papadopoulos from the university of maryland saying hey we create elf waves and extremely low frequency waves and then you got the nerve to even say electrical signals in the mind are low frequency very low frequency we know this and we know that harp is used to create elf and, and vlf and ulf waves so why even try to say harp is using very large frequency waves and meters long um and try to say there's no possible link is freaking ridiculous so that's my story and i'm sticking to it i hope you guys will check the references see the article over there maybe go post a comment i posted a comment i seriously doubt it'll be published but this video sure will be published and i appreciate you all tuning in and listening to me rant about the harp open house and the propaganda coming out of director bob mccoy who seems to say that you know this is all ridiculous everything that people are claiming are ridiculous when we have all the evidence to prove that what he is saying is absolutely ridiculous 
So, once again, I'm Jim Lee, ClimateViewer.com. I hope you guys will continue to support my work on Patreon or give a one-time donation on PayPal. Um, and I hope that you guys will spread the word about this because, you know, obviously the, the open house um, was allowed to just, you know, spew their propaganda. I really wish I could have been there. Um, you know, I, I, had my, I had my reasons I couldn't go. Everybody already knows, but that doesn't stop me from responding to their propaganda and, uh, you know, getting the story straight. So please read the articles. I asked Ferric Eaters how HARP really works and HARP, ELF Generation, and Mind Control. All are available on climateviewer.com. Um, they are Creative Commons non-commercial, 4.0 international, meaning you are free to, you know, remix these articles, repost them on your website. Just please give a link back to the original and please go comment on that article. It's on Anchorage Daily News and set the record straight because um, right now in the comment section it's just a bunch of trolls you know having a field day laughing their butts off about this but the facts are the facts and the facts are you can easily turn create ELF waves that screw with your emotions your ability to sleep um, many things the Russian government the EU Parliament warned about this there's no oversight to these kinds of atmospheric experiments that's why I've proposed um, something called the uh, Environmental Modification Accountability Act. And that's to bring accountability to experiments like we're seeing over there at HARP, um, you know, to end atmospheric experimentation without notification and bring accountability to, uh, you know, these, um, I don't know how else to put it, liars. So, uh, space weather modification is a thing. Um, creating ELF waves is a bad thing. Screwing with the Schumann resonance is a bad thing. And I hope that you guys will spread this video around because information is power and with great power comes great responsibility. So I simply ask that you use this information to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.